All right, welcome back, folks. We're starting a completely new topic today, and it's called the global impact of computing. And as you'll recall, we're working with some of the APCS principles compliant material, and this is, um, this is going to be part of that. I'll show you that in the slide after this. But this course, you might think we're doing a lot of programming. This course is a programming course. One of the most fundamental things that we have to shatter is this is not a programming course. At least at Berkeley, the Beauty and Joy Computing is a brand new course. We took our old programming only course and made it to have, uh, kind of expanded it to have these wonderful ideas that kind of broaden the, the um, blinders in some sense, the programming blinders that you used to have we would just program for 15 weeks. And now we actually have time to think about really the impact of computing. And what that's done is that's brought, brought in students who are interested in not just coding, but also the stuff like this, which is great. So um, this is part of the piece. Now, in this electronic version of the course at X course, you're going to see many different resources. And this is true in our local course as well. Um, you have videos, little short videos. Those are mostly for demos and the big ideas. Those are not to teach you the detailed detail of coding. All that comes from the labs that you're doing, the interactive labs where we ask you to do some exercise. You know you've got reading you're doing, and all those readings also contribute to the big ideas. And activities is everything. So when you have face-to-face -face activities in your high school, um, you're going to be doing that. We're going to try to figure out a way to have those activities be for the folks who don't have a high school to connect with. So as I mentioned, this is one of the big seven big ideas of the CS Principles class, and we're a CS Principles class. So it's idea number seven, but it's not ranked at all. It's not like creativity is number one. And, uh, and global impact is number seven. They just happen to be in some order, but notice their bullets not numbered, so there's not really an ordering to that. Okay, so this is a new topic. The next series of lectures and activities are a new set of topics, and you may have kind of lecture. It's harder to have programming activities in the lab for this kind of stuff, so it's mostly going to be lecture, clicker, question, lecture, clicker, question, that kind of thing. Okay, so let's start. Communication, interaction, cognition. So this slide is meant, and this first couple of slides are meant to kind of share with you how transformative computing and mobile computing have been to societal life, essentially. Um, so they have brought in new ways to communicate and collaborate. Think, think, if you will, when you were really young and how you did collaboration and communication, right? You might have had a phone, you might have had mail, you probably had email, but you probably weren't using it. Um, now, with the internet and the web, email, SMS, which is text, chat, which is live chat, video conferencing, and you see a picture here of a video conference in a professional setting where you have a whole team of people. Um, in that particular case, I think they have six live people and eight remote people. And they are like, they are as if they're in the same room. Um, I talked to the folks at DreamWorks. We have, the DreamWorks had two locations one in Glendale, which is in Southern California, and one in Redwood Short, Redwood City, which is in Northern California. And they, ha they, had a, they showed me to their room. I said, do you have your, can I see your room? And they showed me, somebody snuck me in to see their room. And their room looked exactly like that room. They had a wall of high definition screens and a lot of really nice high end chairs. And they said, we just sit here and they sit there and there's a camera focused on just two people and it's zoomed in really high. And when you look across and look across at somebody, it looks like you're looking at them. So it's not just I have to look at people straight ahead of me. When I look to them, the camera switches so it looks like I'm looking at them. It's just the weirdest thing how you can have this virtual window between these. So imagine how that's changed and allowed people to have two teams, you know, hundreds of miles apart and still get work done as if they were in the same room. Cloud computing, we'll talk more about that. Haven't really told you what cloud computing is, but this is using the compute power of the cloud and using the storage of the cloud uh, to be able to use that. You've done this in Google Docs, I'm sure, a fair bit. But cloud computing is a lot more than that, and we'll talk some more about that later in the course. Social media, social media is incredible and is evolving. We didn't have social media 10 years ago, really. Um, we had some form of an email blast, but we really didn't have what we have now in which everyone, between Twitter and Facebook and a lot of the new hot apps, it's amazing how viral things have gone and how there are full communities in apps. So in the Facebook app, there are people all there, but you have to be in that app to be in that community it's, or in the the web service. But anyway, it's pretty cool how uh, tons of people are in these spaces and communicating in ways we never thought about. Liking things and plusing things and plus one and minus one and all those things which are different than I'd ever grown up with. It's transformative in the ways to communicate and collaborate. If you provide widespread access to information, so which is what the web and the internet does, if you give this away, wh how, how do you benefit? Well, you benefit in several ways. One, people who want to solve problems, researchers, 
can know about problems that they normally wouldn't have known about, right? If they're working in their isolated lab, they wouldn't have known about, there's a real problem out there that I might be able to help with. They can all contribute. So we're one global family. We can all contribute to those solutions. And the best thing is, when a huge breakthrough happens, we can disseminate those solutions. So we can, I've done something, and how do I tell the world that this is a cure to some crazy thing we just discovered? Bam, all of a sudden I can go on social media and go viral and share this result instantaneously. So that's really exciting, where if we find, let's say, a cure for Ebola or a shot or something, that's an easy, oh, if you just wash your hands in this way. By the way, I don't know if you knew this, but people didn't wash their hands pre 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 to prepare meals 20 years ago. That was a recent thing. Public health realized that, wait, when you wash your hands, you, people didn't get sick. And so now when you people, it's flu season, you always people wash your hands, wash your hands, wash your hands. That's a relatively new thing. And back in the day, it was very hard for them to get the word out about that how important it is to wash your hands before, before meals, especially for people who, who are food and food service. If we had what we have now, that would just go blasted and go viral and it would go, it would go global very quickly. So it's really helped quite a bit with dissemination. I will talk about the Netflix prize you see here. This Netflix prize is about recommendation systems. Netflix, if you don't know, Netflix is a system that will stream movies to you, and they recommend the next movie based on what you've liked so far, what you've seen so far, and what you've liked so far. Okay? Well, they have a recommendation system where they predict what, given what you've seen and what you've said you've liked, they're going to suggest five more movies for you. Okay? They have an algorithm for that. They had a Netflix challenge, a prize given to the researchers who could come up with a better algorithm than the one they had. And the best one that they found, they would get a big prize. There were some issues because they tried to anonymize the data. We're going to see this in the social implications context, that often in your best interests, there are some implications, which is they tried to anonymize the data. People were able to double, to reference when people voted in Netflix, that they voted, and when they rated it on IMDB, Internet Movie Database. And they were able to, because you have your name on your IMDB account, but this Netflix data is anonymized, they can say, you know what, this name, because it was voted the same, within seconds of the same movie, probabilistically it's the same person. So they de-anonymized the data, and all of a sudden they went, oh my gosh, the people we promised would be anonymous in terms of, oh, boo, you know, boo, I don't know, Gone with the Wind, Godfather, the classic movies, I hated them, I hated them. And it's like, wait, that's a person who's very unique. Well, we told them that be, be, you'd be anonymized. You'd never be outed for the fact that you didn't like these great movies, or whatever. The point was, it was de-anonymized, and now you can find out that, Susan, why did you like Godfather? Wait, how did you know that? Well, because, you know, I, I traced you to Susan, whatever. Okay, so that was an issue. So they pulled the Netflix prize, and they're not going to do Netflix prize for number two. But the point was, Netflix prize involved the whole recommendation system research community. They all heard about it, so the, pro the, the, the problem was made up, it was quickly uh, shared with the world. They all got to work on it. They all submitted a solution, many of them, and then whoever won, that was disseminated. So all that thanks to the kind of virality of widespread access to information. So it's pretty cool as an example there. 